IVF lab at Life IVF Center. My name is Chris and I'll be taking you on a little behind the scenes tour of our lab and what we do. Um, I'm going to show you what happens to your eggs and your embryos and your sperm. So after your egg retrieval, we're going to take your eggs and uh, find out how many of them are mature. Uh, the difference between mature and immature is chromosomal content. An immature egg is abnormal chromosomally uh, with the DNA, which means that it cannot be used for ICSI. So uh, embryologists will determine which ones are mature, and then after we do that, we can prepare the sperm for washing, and embryologists can do ICSI after that. The insemination technique we use at our facility is called ICSI. This stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or pretty much means we take one sperm and we put it straight into the egg. This process is perfectly safe for the egg and it results in a very good fertilization rate. The percentage of successful ICSI fertilization at our clinic is upwards of 98 to 99%. And this is because our embryologist is one of the best in the world. To get the sperm, we can do a couple different options. Uh, the most common one and the easiest one for us is the fresh sample collection which means that your partner will come to the clinic on the day of the egg retrieval and they'll do a collection and then we will use that to wash for the eggs. If your partner is going to be unavailable for future collections, another option that you can do is to do a fresh collection on the same day of egg retrieval and then freeze the remaining sperm. We will let you know if the collection is enough to do freeze remaining and it does have an extra fee but it is also very convenient because you only need to come to the office once. Another option you could have is the frozen sample, which would need to be done prior to the egg retrieval date. And uh, we will take that sample and thaw it to find any motile sperm within there. Typically, when we freeze your sperm, we'll separate them into three vials. These three vials are then stored in tanks of liquid nitrogen and can be held for upwards of five, even 10 years. Um, when we thaw them for egg retrievals, we use one vial per egg retrieval. In terms of the frozen samples, we will not thaw any of the vials unless we have mature eggs. So please don't worry that we're going to waste the vials. The difference between fresh and frozen sperm is not very big. Uh, we can use either the fresh collection or the frozen collection, and the only difference is uh, ease for the lab technicians like me. Fresh samples are the easiest to wash, and they generally have the most sperm available. When we do freeze the sample, a portion of the sperm will die. That's just part of the nature of the process. But since sperm come in quantities of millions, you know, you can imagine that even if you take off half a million or three million, if you start with 30, then you'll be okay to find just that one that we need. Um, another option for the frozen sperm is donor sperm, which can be purchased from any cryobanks, and those can also be here on the day of the egg retrieval and not any later than that. So the egg retrieval day is considered day zero, which may be a little bit confusing, but after we do the ICSI insemination with any of the mature eggs, uh, we can send you a report on day one, which will be the day after that. Now, this report will look something like this, where it will have your name, your partner's name, as well as list all of the different eggs that you retrieved, whether they be mature, immature, um, and then you can see uh, which ones we did ICSI on, and you can see how many were fertilized. Uh, another important part of the report will be the culture plant. Um, that is listed right here. It's the embryo culture plant. Um, this one is important because it's kind of like a double check for us to see that we're doing what you wanted us to do with the embryos. Whether it's PGS testing, not PGS testing, uh, freezing on day three, freezing on day five, all of these are different options that will be listed uh, specifically per your cycle. In regards to the culture plan, this should be finalized and determined with the doctor prior to the egg retrieval. After the egg retrieval, we can confirm it with you, but in, if there's any changes that you need to make, those have to be given to the IVF lab before day two. After your egg retrieval, you're going to get two updates. One was on day one, and the next one will be after all your embryos are finished growing. This will be called your final embryo status update, and it will also be uploaded to your patient portal. Now, if you did day five cryo or blastocyst cryo, 
You may see terms listed under day five, such as cavitating, morula, or compacting. These terms just mean that the embryo has not yet reached the blastocyst stage and we can't freeze them. Their definitions can also be found on page two. Also, if you did PGS or pre-implantation genetic screening, there will be clear instructions included with your email. Another thing that you'll see on your embryo report is that day three and day four don't have a status. This is because uh, we let them grow undisturbed and in peace. Um, you can imagine why we do this because if you were the embryo, uh, you'd be growing kind of in like a dark cave and then out of nowhere, a huge giant would come and pluck you out of your cave and then they would look at you and then put you back in your cave. You can imagine that this would be very disturbing and uh, shocking. Uh, that's kind of why we don't do it. To protect your privacy, we're going to encrypt your email update with password. That password is going to be your date of birth in eight digits. So for example, if your birthday was March 31st, 1984, then the password would be 03311984. Another service that we provide is PGS testing. This stands for pre-implantation genetic screening. And what it tells us is if the DNA in your embryo is normal. Um, if you don't have any prior background with genetics or any genetic studies, you can think of DNA as the most complicated instruction manual ever. Um, if you were to try and build a car and you were following an instruction manual, if you're missing any part of that manual, uh, the car is not even going to be able to be built. Uh, the PGS test verifies if that instruction manual is complete and correct. Ultimately, the goal of the PGS test is to minimize the number of transfers needed to get you a healthy baby. To do this test, we have to take a small piece of the embryo called a biopsy. When the embryo gets to the blastocyst stage, it is clearly defined into a couple different areas or portions. Uh, one of those portions is called the ICM or inner cell mass. This will eventually become the fetus. Another portion is called the trophectoderm, and this will eventually become the placenta. So while this process is definitely stressful for the embryo, it is perfectly safe and it does not affect the chances of a normal embryo uh, to implant and become a healthy baby. Typically, it takes about two to three weeks for your results to come back after you request a test. We will never send out your biopsies to be tested without your explicit written consent. We do recommend PGS testing for all age groups because it reduces the number of transfers necessary for a successful pregnancy. While it's not included with cycles general cost, it is a good investment because you will save money on transfers and you will also save money on any potential egg retrievals. When you get your PGS report, it will be encrypted just like your embryo status update. When you open it, you will see a couple different things. It'll list the embryos that were tested. It will a short summary of if it is normal or abnormal. After that, it will specify exactly which parts of the genome are abnormal for the abnormal ones. And uh, for the normal ones, it will just say normal boy or girl. If your embryos are abnormal, it means that the instruction manual for the embryo to grow uh, is missing parts or has too many parts. This means that the embryo will almost 100% not implant successfully and it cannot be transferred. Um, this embryo will then be uh, discarded with your explicit request. Uh, to discard the embryos that are abnormal, you will just need to fill out an embryo disposition form. Uh, you can obtain this form by contacting either the front desk or the billing department. And this form does need to be signed in person so that we can verify the identity of you and your partner, or it can be notarized and uh, sent back to us. As a reminder, any embryos that you have stored with us will not be discarded without your explicit request and uh, that form being completed. If you have any questions, the best way to reach us is through our email, which is ivflab at lifeivfcenter.com. If you need to speak to someone directly, please give us a call after 2 p.m. during normal business hours, and we'll be happy to get to you as soon as possible. Thank you, and we wish you the best of luck.